Hello friends, this is Milk and today we're going to paint a rainbow. To start, I use some masking fluid to block off where the stars are going to be later. I should have put masking fluid around at least the characters' heads and legs, but I did not and I do regret not doing so. If you haven't used masking fluid before, it's really wonderful for simple applications like that where you're just blocking off a spot for later. I tend to use it for blocking off a character so I can focus on the background of an image if I want to have like a detailed background um, because it lets me not have to worry about that character. Also, should say the masking fluid I used is awful. I got it at Walmart and I don't suggest anyone buying it. I had never used masking fluid before and I had seen an illustrator use it to great degree to do like shadows on a thing and I thought I want to try that and I am an impatient, impulsive person. So I just bought the masking fluid at Walmart because I did not want to spend a lot of money and I didn't want to really think about it. And I hate it. It eats brushes and I already have absolutely terrible brush maintenance to begin with. So I have ruined like three brushes with it at this point because I have a very hard time getting the masking fluid back out of the brush. I also just have a hard time drawing with it in general. Next time I'm gonna just buy one of those masking fluids that are nicer with the long nib that you can just draw with the, um, with the bottle itself. In general, this painting was kind of a hell painting for me. Um, I had a terrible time with it. And to start, part of it was that I don't, I don't normally paint like this. Um, I wanted this really soft, watery rainbow that was what you think of when you hear the word rainbow. I don't normally draw things that are that saturated in an obvious way to begin with, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, the technique I'm using to paint it is it basically extremely saturated the paper. Like, it's hard to tell, but it's absolutely soaked. So the goal was to blend just using the big pools of water. I wanted to make the orange by blending the big yellow pool of water with the big red pool of water and make the green the same way with the yellow and the blue. And it sort of worked. It, it did work. Um, There's a lot of waiting. So like I would do a big wet mess and then I would walk away and let it dry and sometimes it would take like an hour to completely dry and then I would do it again to build up the saturation. I really wanted to have these big, nice, natural watermarks. So it had this like organic look to it and I couldn't leave it alone. I couldn't stop tweaking. I have like this incessant need to keep, to keep just touching things and I couldn't just let it dry where it was. Um, to the point that I ended up just taking off the masking fluid and telling myself I'm not allowed to paint it anymore. In general, I wasn't sure what to paint to paint a rainbow. Basically, what I did is I wrote myself a list of prompts and I said, I won't have to think about what to paint because I'll know what to paint. I'll just go through my list. And I tried to make them like 
really easy things, like things that I would already probably paint, like bear and like a frog, and in this case, a rainbow. And rainbows specifically, you would, you would think it would be easy to paint a rainbow, but I honestly did not know what to paint. I, rainbows are such an odd item. They're like inherently queer, which is fine because my art is inherently queer to begin with. It's funny how when you are a bisexual person dating the opposite gendered person, the whole world forgets that you have any amount of queerness in you, but it does not erase the fact that you are queer. So I feel like that comes through with a lot of my paintings to begin with in that I tend to draw these absolutely adorable, mostly femme-identified characters who are in ambiguous relationships with other very cute femme characters. I think I was subconsciously inspired by a film that a girl I went to school with did where she was like the only person who tried to do something CGI, which is probably why I remember it. And she had like these two gender ambiguous characters and one's on one like floating grass cloud and the other one's on another floating grass cloud and they both jump to each other and it was very cute and I, I wonder what happened to her <laughs> and I guess I went with that kind of cliche we're floating in the sky thing with this not that what she did was cliche but what I did I think is a little cliche I love these anthropomorphized animals so much. I need to like come up with a comic or a story around them. I don't really like furry art, like it's fine. I don't have strong feelings about it being good or bad because some of it is very, very good to be honest, but I just, it's not my aesthetic. Like I don't like that Disney meets anime thing it's got going on, like for me. But that being said, I absolutely love anthropomorphized animals, specifically bears and deers and foxes, and I guess now cats. Part of it initially was because I loved the anime Yurikumi Ashi, which, which is great. You should look it up. It's absolutely adorable and it has little bears in it. Um, and then I just kept drawing bears, I guess. I really do need to come up with a story or a reason to keep drawing them. Like if they had their own world or storyline that I could write that they go with, would be really great. I just don't have an idea right now, aside from that I know they live in the forest because they're bears. That's where bears live. Part of it's probably the way that I paint, because I use so much paint, 
but this masking fluid really doesn't like to come off for me. To the point that I think I am going to have to try a different brand soon. Oh yes, and you will also notice that I completely messed up my deer person's legs. I forgot the deer have hooves, and even if I didn't forget the deer have hooves, the left leg is longer than the right leg, which is wrong. There, yes, happy accidents are totally a thing, Bob Ross, but you should have your things be anatomically correct to an extent. Like, things don't have to be perfect, but they should have their own internal logic, and this one does not, it just looks wrong. So I went through the process of trying to fix it. Um, and to do so, I did just really extend the right one down and then paint so many layers of brown fur over the tops of those um, hoofs till the right leg was the correct length and longer than the left. Sometimes that just happens. When you start painting, you should probably look over your characters and see if you made a mistake like that before you paint things so you can fix it when it's a sketch. But sometimes you don't catch it and that's completely fine. You can still change it with paint. It's not a big deal. But you should totally fix it and not just let it go. Because those are the kind of mistakes that I think really do hurt a work. Because other things like the color palette, the subject matter, your like initial style, like those things are all you. Those things are fine. They're whether or not you like that style is whether or not you like that style. But things like basic anatomy <laughs> and like making sure the shading makes logical sense, making sure you're aware of where your light source is in a painting, like that stuff really does hurt your work if it's logically inconsistent. Like for these guys, I used the purple to shade the light source on the bear, pink for the deer, and then purple again for the cat, but on the cat I used the purple to shade, not highlight, because his fur is yellow, not brown, so the purple is darker than his fur. I hope that looks okay idea being that the light source is just coming above and all around them. You'll also notice I changed her dress like four times. Um, you're only really going to see the two, but I just couldn't decide what I wanted her to look like. I didn't know what I wanted the deer 
person to look like either. The only one who I knew what they were gonna look like is I knew that Catboy was gonna have like a 90s crop t-shirt and a pair of jeans. But the bear girl, I just did not know what I was doing. It was hard to come up with a color scheme that went with a primary colored rainbow, I guess. Harder than I had initially planned on it being. Sometimes I, if I'm not sure what color something's going to be, I'm just, just going to do layer upon layer. Like I did three or four layers of V's for her dress of different like periwinkles, purples and blues until I landed on something that I was okay with. I really like the V's because the V's are coded as being a knitted object, like a knitted dress or in this case a knitted romper or is it a dress? I don't really know. Um, but you can do just layers upon layers upon layers of them, and the more layers you do, the more depth it's gonna have. I think the more depth something has, the more it feels real or relatable. I really like trying to put texture in their clothes. I don't know how I feel about the pastelness of my stars with this rainbow. I wasn't sure what to do, and I feel like they should have been maybe darker, less pastel in the end. Cause like right now they look like Smarties or like Nico wafers falling from the sky. Like they look like candy. Maybe I should get some metallic or glittery paint because I think if they were glittery or shiny it would have really added to this painting, which is a thing I don't have currently. I should probably invest in that. In general, for as much as I'm complaining about this painting, I do really like this throuple. I'll probably paint them specifically again, um, like this deer character. They have become my little avatar. I am totally working on animating them for an uh, intro for this little YouTube series I'm doing. Because I love intros, and I love deer, and I like this deer character. Hopefully it will be finished actually by my next video, but don't cross your fingers. I am unreliable.
when I inked this painting, I thought about adding more hatch marks and more like bolder lines to make those stars even more 3D and to like shade on their bodies even deeper. This whole painting has like 90s teen girl notebook vibes. Like if I were to paint it again, I think I'd make it mixed media and maybe instead of painting the stars have like stickers or like metallic stars or something, which isn't normally what I would paint, but I think it would have fit this painting really well. Like, I don't know, it reminds me of the like collage look that like you would see in like an opening credits to like a preteen movie in the 90s. Maybe I'm making that up, maybe I'm remembering something that never happened, but that is what it makes me think of. Like, similar to Lisa Frank, but I guess less saturated because I did so many pastels. And we are nearing the end of inking this painting. And I cannot wait to pull the tape off.
After I pulled the tape off, I realized that I was not finished with this painting and I should not have pulled the tape off. I added some shine marks around the stars, so that like, like glow marks, and then I splatted some paint onto the paper. I do like literally splatting it by like pressing the brush or like tapping on the brush because I like the disjointed natural look of actually splatting the paint on and in this case it was to give it that like outer space look because they're kind of like stars or like galactic dots. <laughs> I think it gives it some depth and it gives it this like fun bright tone. And that is it. That is the end of this painting and this video. It's Halloween season now, so we're gonna be spooky with the next video because I love Halloween season because it's the only time of the year where other people are also watching scary movies. And I can't wait to see you then. Bye!